Hello, this is Helen from HelenLindup.com, and I'm going to take you through the things you need to think about if you want to take your conference online using a virtual event platform. Now, this is quite new to many of us because until recently, we used to just go to events face to face, get big groups of people together and, um, and do it in the same way as we have for many years. But COVID-19 has meant that many of the offline activities we used to take for granted, we've had to move online and this is just one of them. Now I have several videos on my YouTube channel along this theme, taking what you used to do offline and putting it online. So if that's the sort of thing that interests you, do take a look um, or subscribe to my channel and uh, you'll get notified of new videos as I make them. But as I said, this is just the basics of uh, virtual event platforms. They do get quite deep and I wanted to just make a video to explain where to start, really. So you may be wondering, why can't I just use Zoom? Well, if you think about it, um, I should just say, first of all, that um, other similar platforms are available. <laughs> but most people I know have just gone straight to Zoom um, in this crazy six month COVID period that we've just been through and are going to carry on with for some time by the looks of it. So why can't you just use Zoom? Well, if you think about it, if you've got maybe five Zooms in a day, five Zoom meetings in a day, that's a lot to manage. You've got to manage the speakers. Um, you've got to manage getting the attendees there, getting the links to them, um, making sure they show up. You've got to manage the any emails and notifications. So that can be uh, your marketing emails that you send out to get people to sign up, but also the emails you send to remind them, uh, to send them the links and possibly follow-ups. And if you multiply that five times and then have all those um, pages with information on to tell them why they should come along, any marketing content you need to produce to put out there, that's a lot to manage without some platform to hold it all together for you. But there's more to online events than just presentations, of course. I mean, up till now, I've just mentioned the presentation side of it. There is a lot more going on there at a conference. If you think back to way back in the days, <laughs> um, early 2020 and before when we actually used to go out, um, there's a lot more to a conference than just sitting in a presentation. For example, um, if you're running a conference, you're going to want to showcase your speakers. Now, sometimes speakers um, speak for free for re to really raise their own profile. And in that situation, you're going to want to you know, spread the word about them, make them look good. Um, and also so that they will share your event with their followers. Um, but you also want to make them look good for the benefit of your own event so that you get more people to the event. You also you want to connect your attendees. So it's not just about going in there and listening. You want to see who else is there. You want to um, connect with them, get to know them. You want to chat with them, um, network with them as well. Um, and having a virtual event platform will enable you to do that in a way that would be quite difficult if you used, for example, Zoom or just a, a platform for video conferencing and nothing else. So um, to give you an example of what you could do, you may have a chat function there that enables your attendees to talk in, in real time, sorry, talk type in real time with your speakers or, or perhaps um, after the event or before the event with your speakers to ask questions. Um, you may have some bios um, for each of your attendees so everyone can see what everyone else does. Um, they can uh, find people who are in a similar area to them or complement complementary skills to what they do so they can network with them. Um, you may want to go the full way with this and you may want to make a diary available so that they can book one to one um, meetings with each other. That's a possibility as well. And these virtual event platforms can give you that uh, that functionality. Uh, communication is really important. I touched on this at the beginning. Um, if you've got an event, that's potentially a lot of emails we're talking about, uh, both to get people to the event and to communicate with them about what's going on once the event is happening. Now, email isn't always the 
best way of doing this when you're in the event itself because we tend to think of email as being um, instantaneous but actually it isn't it can take some time for an email to to come through um, so once you're within the conference itself you're better to have a, a notification system on the platform itself because that will be instant in a way that email isn't always so that's important too also we've got um, bookings and taking payments. So um, it may be a free conference, even if it's a free conference, you need to take people's um, name, probably their job title if it's a professional conference, and you ideally need some sort of profile setting up for them, um, as I mentioned, so that other professionals can see who's there and can see what they do. Um, for many conferences, you're charging for it. So you're going to need some means of taking payment and then allocating perhaps those people to the sessions they've booked up for. So that's a feature as well. And that's something that um, on its own Zoom wouldn't do. You would need to integrate Zoom with another tool to be able to take, take payment and sell tickets. If you're running a conference, you may want sponsors because they're going to um, contribute towards the costs of the conference and bring the cost of the tickets down. That's a very important feature of conferences. Um, and you need a whole load of other features for sponsors. Now, you could possibly just uh, put the sponsor logo beneath the event on the page itself with sponsored by and then a logo in the company name. You can do a lot better than that with an um, event platform. So you can have um, virtual sponsor booths. So they're like trade booths that you would have, like trade tables you would have at a conference where you can go along um, and you'd normally have a chat with the the um, the company rep behind the table, you would talk about their product, um, you know, you might hand over a business card, that kind of thing. You can do all that on these um, platforms. They will enable you to do that. So you can have a trade booth, you can have, um, they can have a, like a virtual table where you can go along and have a chat with them. Um, they can have Q&A sessions that are scheduled or you can just go along and have a chat with them. Just depends on how the conference is organised. So loads of potential there for keeping sponsors happy as well and, and showcasing what they can do. So if you're going to need an event website and looking at all that, the chances are you're going to need a dedicated website for this event. Why not use one specially designed for exactly this purpose. It's going to be a lot easier than trying to set this all up yourself with just plain web pages. And that's where the virtual conference or virtual event platforms come in. They also sometimes come with mobile apps as well, because many people are going to be accessing this from mobile devices rather than sitting at a desk. So I'm going to talk about very briefly a conference that I set up or was part of the team that set up um, a couple of weeks ago now. Um, it was the um, TMA, that's the Turnaround Management Association, Europe Conference 2020. Now, this event was every other year. It's been a face to face, live, traditional conference uh, in a European city. Um, people travel in from all over Europe and the USA to visit it. And of course, 2020 came along. It was uh, scheduled for May. That was not going to happen in 2020. So it had to go online. And so it was moved to September. Um, we had just a very small team of people to set it up and uh, not a huge amount of time, actually. So uh, we pulled together and got it all ready for mid-September. These are the features that it had. We had some live Q&A sessions. So these were actually Zoom sessions. Zoom can be embedded in this platform that we used. Um, we had some recorded presentations, and that's important. You don't have to have all live sessions. And in fact, if you've got a small team, um, lots of live sessions can be quite difficult to manage. So it's fine and it's perfectly OK to have a number of recorded presentations. Uh, we had one to one networking so attendees could look up other attendees, click a button, request a meeting and then it was scheduled in a calendar on the platform for them. Um, with this particular group of people, networking is, is very valuable and that's something they very much uh, want to do at a conference. So that was a, an important feature for them. We had those virtual trade booths. So the, the sponsors and the exhibitors um, had their own page on the website and people could book, attendees could book sessions with them to, to chat one to one uh, uh, with those 
exhibitors and sponsors. We sold the tickets using Eventbrite, which is a, a well-known ticketing platform, works extremely well online as well as for face-to-face in-person events. We used a platform called Pathable, which I, I really liked. I thought it was great. Um, and we also had Eventbrite integrated with Pathable. So when someone bought a ticket on Eventbrite, it automatically created them as an attendee on Pathable. Um, so we didn't even have to do any importing. It was all done um, automatically. OK, so this is the, the Pathable website. If you would just to like to take a look at what's on there to get more information about that. As I said, there are other platforms you can use, but this is the one that I'm familiar with. And um, now the TMA conference is over, so it wouldn't give you a good picture of, of what's possible if I showed you that right now. Um, if you did want to know more about the conference, if you just go to um, tma-europe.org, that's where the conferences are and um, planning will begin for the 2021 uh, conference fairly soon, if that's something that, that you think might be interesting. So uh, that's the conference there, the conference page. And also, as I said, we used Pathable. Um, there are other event platforms. It's just with, as with any tool, it's a question of finding the one that works best for your needs. Um, so because I that event is over, I'm going to show you a, an event that's happening as I'm recording this. So the event is called E-Commerce Expo and Technology for Marketing. Don't worry if that sounds a little bit too high tech. It is not a problem at all. I'm just going to show you how the conference is laid out. OK, so uh, this is the conference. I'm logged in and you can see there uh, it's got information about me. So I've got a little profile in the conference if anybody should want to find out more about me. Ideally, I would put a photo in there, but I haven't got around to doing that. Uh, this is the main home page. So you can see that uh, it comes with an agenda. So you can go through and see what you want to take part in. And uh, you've got exhibitors. So these would be the, the sponsors and the exhibitors of the event. And you can click through to any of those and get more information about those. The exhibitors um, also play a part in the the uh, presentations themselves. So it isn't just a logo and a name on a screen. Some of the exhibitors are moderating some of the sessions. Uh, we've got the speakers. So you can find out about the speakers. And uh, there we go. And we've got obviously technical support if you get stuck. And these are the notifications I was talking about. So these are going to be much more up to date than emails. So I have received some emails, uh, but I haven't been bombarded with them. I've really just got them at the beginning of the day to remind me that the presentations are kicking off for that particular day. Um, these are the ones that are reminding me about the individual sessions I've booked on to. So if I open up a presentation, give that a click. And you can see you can register for that particular session. It's got the sponsor information at the bottom and information on the speakers and the attendees. So you can see people who have similar interests to you and uh, connect with those if you want to. So thank you for watching. I hope that's just given you a flavour of what's possible with online events. As I mentioned at the beginning, there's a lot more information out there that, uh, that you might like to look at if you want to explore this in more depth. If you would like more information from me um, on this or any aspect of taking your business from the offline world into the online world, that's something that I can help you with. Um, so post me a comment below or go to my website, send me a message and I will do what I can to help you out. Thank you very much and I'll see you again soon.